suddenly felt very aware of my race. I felt like I was walking around with a label on my head. Everyone assumes in this industry that you're like them, that you've had the same education and the same upbringing. And there's just this assumption that you'll know all the same things. We grew up in a council estate. There was a huge national front presence, huge amount of racism in those early days. So there were like lots of challenges. I think we were quite sort of typical of immigrant family really. My mum was illiterate basically. My mum never went to school. My sister was the first girl in our family to go to school and I was the first person in my family to go to university. So it's quite a jump. I think I did pretend to be someone I wasn't for a long time. I think I felt a lot of shame about who I was, being working class, coming from a family where you know my parents didn't speak English. As I've become more confident, I can now say, oh, I, I don't know that because I didn't go to a very good school or I never learnt that or that's not my experience. You know, now I make a point of saying things, you know, like if there are words, people are using language that I don't understand, if there are references I don't understand, I like saying, oh, what does that mean? Or, or what, what is that? I don't know what that is. It's almost like the Wizard of Oz, you know, it's like peering behind the curtain and then realising actually, it's really not that impressive. <laughs> I was working at a production company. The three bosses, who were all white middle-aged men, never, ever, ever, ever spoke to me. Like, never said hello to me, never acknowledged me. I just thought it was normal. I just thought, oh, well, they're like big wigs, so why would they talk to me? And I remember I had an AP working for me, and I just remember one of the people that ran the company running over to her and saying hello and giving her a big hug and then asking about how her mother was, you know, because he, he knew her mum and she was someone who worked in the industry too. And I thought, oh God, it's me. They don't say hello to me because I'm a nobody. As I moved up and wanted to direct, I felt like being a woman was, uh, you know, a barrier, actually. I could see all the boys around me directing and, and sort of being told, oh, but we see you more as a producer and, you know, you're a really good producer. Why would you want to do something else? You're great at what you do. Being a working mum, I think that has been by far the biggest challenge. A lot of women do leave the industry and I think that the work-life balance, being able to juggle motherhood with work is really difficult if you don't have the right things in place. There are not that many people like me at my level. It's a big problem with having a lack of diversity higher up is that people have very similar experiences, similar references. So if you're pitching an idea to them, they just might not get it. They don't know where you're coming from. When I made the shift from making programmes to going to commissioning, I suddenly felt very aware of my race and my background, very aware of it. I felt like I was walking around with a label on my head. I grew up in multicultural London. This is my home, you know, everyone around me looks like me or from a different place, everyone's different. Whereas when I entered a broadcaster, I suddenly felt other. There are a lot of announcements, a lot of schemes, a lot of this and that. But I think the work has to go into just doing it, you know, actually just recruiting people.